What's up, YouTube? Pretty nice day here today. I think it's 31 degrees or so. Still got plenty of snow kicking around. I think they're calling for another two to four inches here in a couple days. Uh, so those of you that have followed me for a while, you know, winter was always my favorite time of year. Uh, fall and winter, really. And, uh, I don't know if that's slowly changing or what. Or just the things I want to do that are changing that for me. So yeah, I posted that uh, video yesterday. Shot from my computer, because I don't have any editing software. There was a couple of you that made recommendations on you know, free downloads and stuff like that. So definitely check them out. I'm always leery of that stuff because I'm not, you know, wicked computer savvy and all that. And I just, I don't want to ruin a brand new computer with downloading something that's going to mess it up. So chose not to do that. But further research shows that Windows 10 actually has like a hidden editing software. It's in like the photo app or something. So I checked that out real quick. Uh, it doesn't do a whole bunch, but it does the basics, I guess. So shoot this video and see what happens but yeah so still quite a bit of snow around we've had some warm days definitely had a solid day or two of rain <clears throat> and it's, it's still here <laughs> I can't wait till it's gone if I'm honest definitely ready for the spring and again with the videos uh, you'll know why so just coming down here this is the old animal area I'll spin you guys around so you can check it out but you know when I was doing the homesteading videos back in the day you know, we had chickens goats uh, some guinea hens that was, that was about it but <clears throat> so yeah that that came to a stop again I was active duty uh, the goats were a riot I friggin loved them they were fun fun to watch you know run down the trail with my son and all that uh, but they were wicked <laughs> obnoxious and escape artists so while I was away with the army most of the time they would constantly break out of the pen and I had it set up pretty good well, you can go back and check those videos out if you want but I opted to leave their horns on I didn't get them dehorned just because I think it's cool uh, with them but they totally busted the uh, the gate to get in and out of the pen for like multiple times they would follow my neighbor used to walk his dog they'd follow him home he'd have to walk him back <laughs> uh little nuisances uh, but they were they were cool man so uh, the side of the shed they blew a hole right through that as well uh just wreaking havoc over here so anyway long story short <clears throat> uh, they kept getting out i was constantly gone with the army uh, and it became a pain in the neck you know for my son and my wife uh, to keep rounding them up and having to deal with that so uh, we ended up getting rid of them uh, so we the guinea hens kind of fizzled out too uh, two of them ended up dying and two of them because uh, I used to let all the birds free range I think they just got picked off uh, as well as the chickens over time we we're down to I think it was two chickens at, at one point uh, and I had a really crazy day, so we'll tell that story in here in a little bit. But let me spin you guys around and just show you what the the old animal area looks like. So there, if you remember from the older videos, this whole side that was double high picket fence with chicken wire. I ended up taking all that apart <clears throat> again because the wife at the time she didn't want to come down here. We had quite a few bears around. Uh, so she was scared, and again, me being gone, uh, I ended up moving it up there by the house. Uh, and again, we only had probably a half a dozen chickens at that point, and then down to the two. But let me show you the side of the coop here. <laughs> See that big hole? That was a mix of them busting holes through it and eating it uh, as well as that so yeah they were 
they were wreaking havoc down here for sure. So in the front, same deal. I should the door to the uh, shed. So it, it wasn't glass, it was just a piece of wood that looked like you could take it out and put glass if you wanted to. But yeah, totally busted a hole through that. I got that piece of plywood there on just that little section. Yep, blew a hole right through that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty cool. So I can't, I, I got a lot of work to do. Definitely want to fix this area up. And I mentioned uh, in those videos a while ago, the plans I had for this place and uh, you know between time with the army and all that type of thing it just never happened but uh, this year it's gonna happen so here uh, just right across the trail here in this area is where I plan on putting the garden so without cutting anything down just all these little weeds you see I measured it out it's like 25 feet by 40 feet uh, but I'd love to clean all this stuff up too so there's your invasive Japanese knotweed and a bunch of it so I want to clear all that out uh, put some fill in there and what have you but just on the other side of that I got my apple trees uh, the couple pear trees right here in the front and a grapevine over there that all need, need work Nanook yeah punk but yeah so garden area I want to fix up this animal area here and I'm thinking some some hog panels or what cattle panels uh, to go around and enclose that the bigger area that I mentioned again in those older videos it's roughly 90 feet by 90 feet or something like that not perfectly square but something like that so yeah that's some of the plans uh, so obviously still winter I got a lot of work to do as far as getting set up but uh, we do have some things still and we'll show you that here in a second so don't mind the basement that's where we're at and there's a little bit of work too insulation wise but so here was the first thing I decided to add uh, first back to the homestead uh, and it'll make sense because you know I'm planning the garden and whatever so uh, let's take a look so obviously opted for rabbits uh, these are all meat rabbits I'm gonna raise them for their meat specifically but uh, they're all Flemish Giants they do have some sil a silver fox mix uh, as well as some Californian I believe uh, but this is one of my smaller females that's Veronica so she's black and you could she's you probably can't tell I got bad lighting here but she's you can definitely see the silver fox in her pooping <laughs> so there's Big Betty uh, she's got a lot more of the silver fox look uh, same same coloring but I got just more silver in her um, she's pretty cool she's super friendly it's down here in the hutch <clears throat> probably my smallest rabbit he's a male that's Pete he's gonna be a stud I think but most mostly black obviously probably has some silver fox mix in him too although he's he's pretty solid black the biggest rabbit here that's Thumpa Thumpa George he's pretty cool looking and he's huge his head's massive <laughs> so I was hoping he was gonna be my leading breeding buck and we've tried that, uh, no fault to him, but we'll get there. And then Elizabeth is 
hiding in her hide box. But so she looks just like Thumpa, same coloring. She's just chilling in there. <clears throat> so I've had the rabbits for about two weeks ish. Uh, so Big Betty was bred on the 26th of January. So I'm expecting kits out of her about the 26th of this month, February. So they have a 30 day gestation period so we'll be watching for that um, and I bred her with Pete my little guy three or four successful fall offs so that's cool uh, and same with Elizabeth so Elizabeth Thumper and Big Betty are my three biggest rabbits they were born uh, in March of 2019 so like 10 months old and then Veronica and Pete were a different litter uh, and they were born in May so they're about eight months old ish uh, but yeah so Pete has been bred with Elizabeth and Big Betty uh, so obviously different litters I'm breeding them for meat so I can it doesn't matter who I breed you can breed the same litter that sounds kind of disgusting and that's why I won't do it but there's nothing wrong in doing that if you're just using them for meat you obviously don't want to save kits to try and rebreed or raise as breeders later uh, you'd have to harvest them all but the way I'm doing it for the five rabbits I have should be no problems so a uh, little Pete gets bred with the two bigger girls and then Thumpa George will get bread with a little Veronica over here so I've tried that a couple times and she's just absolutely not interested so we'll keep trying that but so yeah I figured I'd start with the meat rabbits uh, one because I want to raise my own meat as well uh, these are the first animals I'm getting uh, certainly not the last uh, I have some other things in mind that we'll show you as we go and, and get them but again like the garden for me uh, this time around I've talked about it I did a small raised bed uh, for a couple years and you know it was a good uh, supplement I guess but I want to grow enough food to where I can eat fresh throughout the summer as well as you know put food up so uh, and that'll be some other videos but yeah so the rabbit manure probably the top manure you can use uh, in your garden it's considered uh, cold so you don't have to compost it uh, you can just put it directly on on your garden and uh, you won't hurt your plants or whatever so uh, we got a little bit of time still it's the beginning of February I'm probably not going to be able to plant anything outside I'll definitely be starting plants inside when the time comes but uh, I, I got I got a little while before that happens so I should have you know a bunch of manure and or compost uh, so I when I clean out their cages I've been dumping it on the raised bed outside uh, and it will compost and there's nothing wrong so essentially I'm creating soil good soil there uh, for when I can plant stuff outside so that's the premise behind all that uh, but yeah I figured I'd give you guys the tour uh, I do have a whiteboard upstairs where I'm keeping track of the breeding and stuff like that so we'll throw that in here real quick uh, at the end but gotta get everybody fed first they're definitely waiting for it hi Veronica so crazy so I'm just feeding pellets uh, pretty much all the hay they they can eat you know obviously water everyone's got water and then I'll give them some snacks so last night <coughs> uh, before bed I just sliced up some apples for them and they devoured that so Betty gets a bit more food So it's about a cup, eight ounces per rabbit per day. Uh, I'm giving her a little bit more because 
she should be pregnant. And she eats. She's really cool. She's probably the best, well, between her and George, probably the best rabbits as far as letting you, you know, touch them and pet them and everything. She'll come right to the door. Oh, my girl. When I first got him, I had him. I only had two cages. Oops. So I kind of had three in one and two in the other and they, they got along pretty good but obviously they need their own space um, this I got from tractor supply and though it's pretty cool uh, it's, it's big enough for Pete because he's still small but <clears throat> I'm gonna get well I need a few more cages now uh, for grow out cages for the kits when they get here but so I built these stands for the cages I'm gonna build at least another one or two four more cages so really you need probably two cages per female uh, if you're breeding uh, so you wean them off from the mother it's about six weeks and uh, then you set you can separate them uh, you can grow them out in the same cage for the most part uh, the lady I bought these from that's how she did it but at some point you're gonna want to separate those males and females from that litter or uh, well, they'll stop being naughty you know what I mean What's up, Papa? Hey, buddy. Such a core of it. It's so so big. Alright, yeah, you can want mess with you. Yeah, Elizabeth. So her, she's the only one that does it, but she has a thing for picking up her bowl and just throwing it all over the cage. I start her with the cup of food <clears throat> just because she'll she'll pick the bowl up and just throw it um, I mean she'll eat obviously I'll put it there. she'll eat but she'll dump food too so I make sure to give her the, uh, the little bit extra later this afternoon just because she's should be pregnant as well What's up, Elizabeth? I'm gonna get you some hair. So yeah, there it is. Everyone's fed hay, food, water. Good to go. So this is a chart I was telling you about. It's got everybody's names, birthday, when they were bred, uh, when I can expect them to have their kits, when I can rebreed them, and then when they're uh, able to be harvested. Now Flemish Giants take a little bit long from my research uh, than like your New Zealands or Californians or whatever uh, to, to grow out. So typically eight weeks you can harvest the rabbit uh, with these and maybe like 10 or something like that, but we'll figure it out. All right, so now I'm gonna sit here and 
edit this video for you guys. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out with this uh, photo lap thing. That's probably not going to be anything fancy, you know, not that it has to be, but appreciate you guys watching. Again, thanks for all your support. Uh, that video yesterday after a year had gone, uh, tons of comments, a lot of good wishes and, and all that sort of thing. And that's why I've always enjoyed making these videos for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. Definitely more to come. Again, big plans. I'm not going to throw everything out there because it seems like over the years when I would say that it wouldn't happen. So, uh, but I walked you around a little bit, showed you, told you what, you know, I want to do and I'm um, going to work towards that. So hopefully we'll have some some cool videos coming out. So until then, take care guys.